Okay, good day everyone. This is Capital Land Integrated Commercial Trust, third quarter 2024 business update, stated 5th November 2024. Right, we look at their uh, portfolio updates. Right, year to date September 2024. Right, net property income is up 5.4% year on year. Right, average cost of debt is up slightly, right, 0.1% to 3.6%. Right, portfolio occupancy is down slightly, but it's still quite healthy, above 95%. Right, uh, this is good. You can look at the rental revisions for the retail side is up 9.2%. Right, this is better than SCT which is 7.7%. Right, and uh, for office portfolio is up 11.7%. Right, so this shows that they are revising their rentals uh, well. Right, they completed refinancing for all borrowings in 2024 this year. Right, and they issued some uh, debt at 3.3% interest rates which I think is cheap. Right, you can see this is below the average cost. Right, so they have hundred percent occupancy committed for IMM, right, which is undergoing AEI, and the uh, AEI for this uh, property in Germany is going to be completed in second half, twenty twenty five, which is uh, quite a bit later. Right, so we look at their acquisition of fifty percent of Ion Orchard and Ion Orchard Link. Right, this was the most recent uh, move they made. Okay, uh, not going to say too much about this, but actually, yeah, their preferential offering which uh, we got to subscribe to was actually cheaper than their private placement, which is interesting to me. Right, anyway, uh, third quarter performance itself, right, uh, generally NPI is up 5.4%, right, and this is given, uh, this is due to higher gross rental income as well as lower operating expenses, right despite absence of income from this property undergoing AEI right so uh, gross revenue third quarter 2024 compared to 2023 is up 1.7 percent right it's lower than the first half right how do I know that I look at the year to date performance uh. so this includes quarter 1, 2 and 3 I see this number is greater right that means to say this number must have been smaller than uh, sorry the first half number must have been better than the third quarter which is 1.7 right but i don't think the difference is too big all right so we go to mpi is 5.4 percent which means to say that uh it's the uh consistent with the first half which is also 5.4 percent this year to date performance right which means one thing which means that actually they control their uh operating expenses well right that means operating expenses uh drop further in the third quarter right which is uh a good thing for management right I uh, have to say that they did a good job there right so we look at all the numbers is generally up except for uh, office assets right there's a slight concern that there's a dip in gross revenue right but if we look at overall quarters one two and three everything is up all right so hopefully this is just a blip we will have to monitor it moving forward all right uh debt no real issue like right? said before fy 2024 debt is fully refinanced right look at the balance sheet right leverage is slightly higher 39.4% but recently they divested a property which will bring this slightly downwards right borrowing slightly lower 9.4 billion all right interest coverage ratio is 3.0 this one don't need adjusted because uh, uh, CICT has no perpetual securities right cost of debt is a little bit higher as we've discussed before right so 3.6 last time it was 3.5 percent right let's move on quickly all right yeah so Occupancy ease, which means drop, not a good thing, right, across the office and integrated portfolio. But integrated portfolio is very high still, la. it's like above 98%. I think you really cannot complain about this, right? Uh, office is a slight concern, right, drop to below 95%. Uh, for integrated development, the area above Raffles City, right, the top floor, appears to be still empty. I'm not sure if that's what is actually causing the slight vacancy here. All right, uh, yeah, this one I don't think nothing much to say. Uh, yeah, we look at this instead, <coughs> right? Retention rate across retail and office are all healthy, right? And we look at the top three uh, categories for inquiries, right? That means food and beverage uh, is uh, most uh, most demand, uh, you can say, right? The most demand for space is for food and beverage, then. Uh, beauty and health fashion accessories right so uh, maybe this is one of those recession proof things that will hold up the mall right and in 
for office side financial services right i think singapore probably uh, most of the office will be in this sector right other than maybe tech all right so this is probably the uh, general future uh, of the office uh, rental clients right moving on to the rental revision right uh, suburban malls or downtown malls are both doing well right all above 99 percent right that's why the overall retail side is up by nine percent in terms of uh, 9.2 percent in terms of rental revisions which is great right but i i sort of looked at this data and interpreted something uh, right so you you decide whether you agree with my analysis or not right so they say sales drop slightly due to outbound travels during school holidays in june and september 2024 and strong singapore dollar which means to say that uh, our currency is expensive right so when uh, foreigners come over they'll probably spend less right they, because they, for the same amount of money they can spend converted to sgd is less <coughs> right sales saw a low single digit percentage increase in third quarter versus second quarter 2024 driven by events right <coughs> but we look at here the year today is september 2024 tenant sales right this is uh considering uh the first three quarters in 2024 versus 2023 you can see that uh, overall rental uh, sorry retail portfolio is down 0.2 percent right <coughs> and <coughs> we look at suburban malls is up 1.4 percent right this why uh, FCT is considered quite resilient uh. they have suburban malls and generally this kind of things is sort of necessity to spend uh. they, they don't really most suburban people have to spend in the malls right downtown malls on the other hand is a bit more uh, prone to uh, cyclical events right for example recessions and maybe uh, travelers so we can see some urban malls is still up year on year downtown malls is down but this is what I, I saw uh, in tandem with this so I thought it was slightly unique you can see some urban malls right uh, the traffic is up 1.9 spending is up 1.4 right it's very close whereas you see downtown malls uh, the spend the traffic is actually up 5.7 percent but people are not spending it they are spending less right so to me this shows that there's some uh, demand issue here right that means to say that the travelers coming in may not have as much money to spend maybe due to the strong SGD or they just have uh, generally less budget overall to spend right so you can see that these things are discretionary spending right that means to say you can put it off if you want to all right but we'll see later that f uh, food and beverage uh, beauty and health and supermarket right these are things that probably you cannot pull off uh. you you just have to spend right so that's why this is resilient right so we won't talk so much about that oh, yeah so you can see the performance for the top categories supermarket education these are needs uh, right you have to have them whether or not your belt is tightening right so uh, yeah anyway uh, my conclusion from here was that i think inflation is biting all right that uh, somehow people are not willing to spend so much on the discretionary items anymore right and you can see here again mostly i feel these are discretionary items right like fashion shoes bags sports right you can put this off if you are not uh, able to afford them right uh not going to cover all this uh yeah their retention is quite strong so i wouldn't worry too much about this uh not covering this i'm not worried about their overseas portfolio because it's quite small <laughs> uh yeah this is the tourism i i don't really see like a big spike coming so far all right you can see the july is a a peak all right and then later on the next peak will be somewhere around here right which is surprisingly around uh february and march right so <coughs> hopefully that the next peak here will be higher because you can see that this this peak is higher than this peak so hopefully this region the december to march period which is the next peak will be higher all right that would be uh, <coughs> the best projection that we can make uh, all right but let's see how the economy goes all right uh, i think demand of uh, the demand is more or less there uh, right because if you have a look at the numbers you can see that the supply is 0.5 the demand is 0.5 all right and of course retail side you know that there are many shopping centers coming up right we quickly look at the divestment all right uh they actually divested this property uh 21 uh Clu 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 right sorry if i 
mispronounce that. All right. So anyway, this is a 999 years property. All right. Uh, at 688 million dollars. Right. And of which, uh, they will take 681 million dollars. So about 6.3 million dollars, uh, worth of cost in divestment. You can see the fee payable to the manager. Right. So you see, uh, whenever they read buy or sell something <coughs> somehow some money will go to the manager la, which is capital land uh, which is capital land itself right so that's great for the manager uh, don't really think yeah so the key point is that it looks like the balance sheet will improve slightly right from 39.9% to 38.3% generally a decent thing right and finally just an update right this one is uh, more recent I believe the date is something like 11 November yeah so basically uh, that's purchased by a substantial shareholder, the Masik, right? So uh, they bought at uh, 7 November, I think. <coughs> Sorry, it's uh, 5th November, <coughs> right? So they bought more shares, right? So you can see that their amount of shares went from this amount to this amount, right? So, yeah, with that, uh, that's the end of the presentation. Uh, please note that now this financial advice, and thank you for listening.